Edwards, 10 after 4 uh, this Saturday afternoon. The, the Green Building Council South Africa has welcomed uh, the finalization of the Climate Change Bill. You remember President Ramaphosa announcing that government is finalizing this bill as it now embarks on a low carbon growth trajectory. Well, organizations saying the president needs to quicken the release of this bill, though. We need to uh, get South Africa to achieve its climate change targets. Uh, here to tell us more about that is uh, Green Building Council Managing Executive, Graham Krushanks. Graham, uh, good to have you with us. First of all, what was the reaction uh, with uh, what President Robert Porsa had to say? There was quite a bit of attention paid on it. Was it lip service or was there substance? There already is substance in, in South Africa's commitments on climate change. What, what we are questioning is implementation. Mm -hmm. So um, there's no doubt that South, South Africa's uh, climate change commitments on reducing carbon emissions are, are significant and are well recorded, well documented. What we lack is the ability to implement and to record our actual improvements in carbon emissions reduction. Why is that, do you think? Um, there's a range of factors. Um, you were, we have a long-term long dependency on fossil fuel for energy production in South Africa. That's a well-known fact, which is currently declining in its ability to deliver. That said, we haven't seen the uptake in renewable energy to fill the gap. South Africa has one of the best solar climates in the world, literally in the world. And we really, we really do need to see a ramp-up in large medium and small scale renewable energy systems coming online to support the bigger picture around climate change targets? Because we've been hearing that there are a lot of independent providers that can come through. They're saying we've got solutions, we can't fix the problem, but we can certainly add uh, to the solution. But it, it's coming across to me anyway, Graham, that there's a lot of red tape and bureaucracy that seems to be getting in the way of that. Something we were very encouraged by during the Sonar speech was the indication that it'll actually become easier um, to do that. Um, and that is very important and I think perhaps for us one of the biggest takeaways looking at buildings and the scale of, in, of installations on, on, on rooftop solar in some cases there are there, are, there is feasibility for wind, um, wind turbines but the reality is that um, uh, solar PV installations small and medium scale have enormous potential and it looks like that red tape is being uh, taken away to some extent you would have heard in my introduction to you, Graham, we were talking about the low carbon emission trajectory. Uh, for someone who doesn't follow it as closely as someone like you does, where are we on this trajectory? What's our timeline here? So we're still on an increasing carbon emissions um, trajectory. What we need to be doing is a peak plateau decline trajectory. We haven't initiated the plateau yet. Um, if South Africa was still in, a, in an economic growth cycle, we would in fact be we would in fact be blowing those targets out the water. As it turns out, economic slowdown has led to a slowdown in energy, energy demand, which has led to a slowdown in carbon emissions. Not a good scenario, no, no. but a reality that we're faced with. And if you were to uh, have the president uh, watch this interview right now, you watched his speech, he's watching you speak at the moment, and you had to say, uh, Mr. President, apart from what you suggested in SONA, in fast-tracking this bill, uh, what else comes to mind for you? That's, that's one scenario, but there's the implementation and recording, as you mentioned. What's, what, what gets the president going on this, do you think? I would bring it right back to a very simple, granular issue and implement um, uh, feed-in tariff and uh, net metering systems. What I mean by that is, if you've got a system generating energy and you have a surplus, what it, the, op, the um, options available to, to, to feed that, um, that surplus into a user are actually quite limited in South Africa. And if you take, for example, a small building with a small solar PV installation which operates only five days out of seven or only needs energy at night but is generating during the day and a range of other scenarios, unlocking that capability through allowing feed-in back into the grid is, is perhaps the single thing that I would ask uh, President Ramaphosa to address. Is there a tipping point for uh, South Africa's carbon emissions? We've seen these issues coming out of China. Uh, those cities there are, are covered in smog, whether it's a clear day or not a clear day. Uh, they're walking around with masks on their faces. Are, are we still looking at a doomsday scenario here, or is that just a bit too dramatic? So at, at the moment, the reports being released by organizations like the UNFCC, uh, the, the, the um, reports by climate scientists are indicating that the trajectory we're on at the moment is not sufficient to reduce 
global average temperature increases by the amount that we need to reduce them by. South Africa is just one part of that. Um, we are perhaps behind, say, northern European countries, which have had the opportunity to plan for longer, have already completed their industrialization, and are on a different economic cycle from, from us. Having said that, the risk of not doing anything about it and the potential impl implications of not doing anything about it are so huge that if we don't, we're making a serious mistake. I appreciate your time coming in to speak to us. Uh, I wish it was on a more positive note, but hopefully when this uh, bill gets passed, we might be having a different conversation. Graham, thank you very much indeed uh, for you. coming in to speak to us. Graham Krushanks uh, from the Green Building Council. Uh, he is the managing executive for that organization.